Hi, and welcome back. Been a while, hasn't it? I promise you it's been worth the wait, since we've been hard at work updating the Pixel 2D, and it should be ready to launch in a couple of weeks, if everything goes to plan, fingers crossed. For more updates on where we're at and the exact timelines and the status of Pixel 2D, don't forget to join our Discord that's linked in the product page. Last time I promised you we're gonna continue adding enemies. I'm gonna be breaking my promise, but that's just because I've had some feedback from you, the community, regarding a few things. So we're gonna be handling those issues first before moving on to adding more enemies. Let's take a refresher, shall we? We ended up having a uh, ranged attack system and some enemies to kill. Pretty cool. And boom. Now, the issue here is that, as you can see, the attack system works fine, it works really well, but it's strictly tied to the animation. So, for example, if you want a delay between the attacks that's not just driven by the length of the animation, you currently can't do that. So, you can pretty much spam however you want. Since we don't want you to be able to spam attacks whenever you want, we want to tie it to a variable, like an attack speed. Let's go to our hero character. We already have an attack speed variable here. Uh, maybe for you it's even linked, since I made a few experiments before. But due to the nature of uh, this setup, it can't really work, since it's only animation driven. So we're just, it's just gonna ignore that. We don't want it to ignore that, so let's make just a few changes in order to make it work. So. You can remove the attack speed variable from here, it's fine, don't worry, not gonna do anything. Then just add it here, and add a delay. Put it here. And then, what we need to do is link the reset from the do once to the attack speed instead of uh, to the range projector released condition. Because you might because this is gonna trigger every time the animation uh, reaches that point, so it's just determined strictly by the animation length. But if we just do it like this, and break the link here, then the number of times we can attack is gonna ignore the animation length, and it's just gonna use the attack speed, which let's, let's give it a large number for testing purposes. And let's test it out, okay? So, I keep pressing, but nothing happens. Until the time period passes, so that's good. Now, the only limitation with this system is if it's longer than the animation, uh, total animation length, then it's fine, it's gonna work. But if it's shorter, like 0 0.1, it's still gonna use the animation uh, length because this variable is set at the end of the animation, so it's not gonna be able to enter the loop before this variable finishes. So like, if I put something like 0 0.1, it's gonna use the animation length, it's not gonna attack faster, which is fine. If we want it to attack faster, why do, why we either need to decouple it from the animation, which looks really bad, or we need to accelerate the animation so it attacks faster, which you can do, but it's a bit more complex, so let me know if it's something you're interested in seeing, and we can handle that in a future video. Now we can finally move on to adding a melee attack. It's more or less the same as the ranged attack, and I took the liberty to modifying a few of the variables names, so we had the attack, sp attack speed and uh, attack damage, I changed them so we know that it's referring to the ranged attack. So it's ranged attack damage, ranged attack speed, and I added a few other variables, which is the melee attacking boolean, melee damage, and melee attack speed. So for the most part, we're just gonna be doing this. Let's add a comment to it, and just like a ranged attack. And we're gonna be duplicating this indirectly for the melee attack. So we're gonna use the Q key for the attack and let's just do it, shall we? I'm gonna fast forward through this since there is nothing new and I expect you to easily keep up.
So, with this part, there's a couple of different things that I need to walk you through before we can get started, okay? Cool. So, you have the melee trace attack uh, function from the BP attack component, and it's kind of the same, but it's also a bit different from the ranged attack. So, first of all, it uses a socket name. What's that, you might ask? Well, basically, for the melee trace attack, we use a thing called sockets, which are just like locations within the sprites that you can set up in different positions in the flipbook. And basically, those are our attack points where the attack is generated. Now, as a, as a standard in Pixel 2D, we call we use the name hit socket. So you can use your own name, but I don't don't suggest you do that since all the tutorials are gonna refer, reference hit socket. So just call it hit socket. I'll explain exactly what it means. And we also need the scene component. This is our pixel component since it's gonna need to know where to look at the sockets and it's gonna do that in our flipbooks. For the rest, the attack duration is just how long should the damage area last. You can leave it for a while. You can leave it for 0.53 seconds. The attack speed, again, we're gonna be animation uh, semi-animation base so we're not going to be using it here and the attack radius is the radius around the sockets where it's going to spawn a damage zone you'll see it in action uh, as we progress through this and so you can tweak it as you want great now that we have uh, this part done let's uh, talk sockets okay cool so if you want to see sockets in action, you go to the Pixel 2D content and check for flipbooks. Where is it? Flipbooks, character, final, and just che check the FB char attack. So let's pause it, shall we? So you can see this. It has hit socket underscore one and hit socket underscore two. And they basically change position on each frame of the animation. And these are the sock, the places where we actually deal the damage from. How you can add sockets is just right click on any frame of the animation and go to edit sprite. So as you can see, edit sprite here. We're not gonna add sockets to this because we don't want to damage it just yet, but we can go, if, if we go here, there you go, we've already added sockets here. And adding and removing sockets is uh, easy. You just need to, for example, I'm gonna make an example here. I'm gonna delete the sockets and add another two sockets. And as you can see, they're added by default in the origin of the sprite, but you can transform them quite easily with these. You can't, uh, it's a 2D, so just X and Z. And we're gonna have it like here, hit socket one and then hit socket two and you need to do this for every frame of every frame of your flipbook and also let's rename them to hit socket one make sure it's named correctly since this is what we're using to reference them and hit socket two okay save and then move on to the next one hit socket one two next one and so on and so on until the attack is uh, done okay unfortunately i mean you can uh, copy you can easily copy and paste them in another so for example here you can just take these two copy and then paste them and then just move them so you don't have to create a name on them again so that's gonna make your life easier but after you've done this just save and, and do this for every attack instance of the melee attack so in our case we have um, we have the standing melee attack we have the running melee attack and we have the jumping melee attack so as you can see let's see this is the melee attack as you can see the head sockets are still here and we have the jumping melee attack where the hell is that come on there you go so we have the same hit sockets there here with the exact same name cool now that you know how to add hit sockets let's go to our hero character animation right just like you added ranged attacks for each different uh, 
type state you want like jumping idle and moving we now need to do the same for melee but before we can do that let's go to the event graph and just add our melee attacking here and just add another variable a is melee attacking great just so you can have it set boom and done so using the same idea as in the ranged attack jumping let's add our melee st melee states as well i'm gonna be fast forwarding through this since this is something that you've already done so bear with me Okay, double check that you've added all the states and all the state transition rules you'll get uh, you'll usually get a warning if there's no rules between states and now let's add our melee attack uh, flipbooks just add it uh, here and we do the same type of thing with the animation notifies as we did for the range. So we're gonna do one and one, enable them the both. And what did we name them for the range? Let me double check. So we have a similar uh, range projectile release and range anyway. So in this case, melee attack start. Melee. Start. Melee anim finish. Okay, so we want to start the melee attack uh, now, and we want to remove the melee attack finished here. Okay, makes sense. And make sure they both enable, close, and do the same for the others as well. So as you can see, you have an almost identical setup to the ranged one. Before we start, go back to your hero character, and there's a bug here. It's, instead of is set ranged attack, is ranged attacking, we need to set is melee attacking. Since I had this, uh, I forgot about this, and I was wondering why I was melee attacking instead of ranged attacking. Okay, so do this. Okay, let's test it out. Go to your world and hit Q. Okay, seems to be working. Let's jump. Works. Move. Works. Okay. So, let's see if the enemies work. Nice. So, let's explain a bit uh, how melee trace attacking works, shall we? If you go into the Pixel 2D folder under components, you'll find the attack component. 
And basically this this is the thing that uh, makes the melee trace attack working. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but there is something we can enable from here. And it's on the multi-sphere trace by channel, we can enable the debug and we can make it last for uh, the duration, let's put it 0.3 seconds. And this is gonna show us exactly how the melee attack uh, zone uh, appears. So let's go back here, hit play. And as you can see, this is gonna draw our whole attack area. Basically, this is determined by the socket, so it may basically traces lines between the sockets, like spheres between the sockets, and anywhere between those here, it's a danger area. So, depending on which sockets uh, you use or you position them and how early, your ranged attack might look a bit uh, different. So, for example, here, if we go into the uh, into our hero character and increase the attack radius to like something like ten, then the spheres that make up our attack are gonna be bigger so as you can see there you go which is i think we can all agree it is way too big so something like three four maybe even five could work for our situation but different values could work for different uh, situations so there you go that's much better so basically if an enemy hits one of these lines then it's gonna die Okay, now you can go back to the BP attack component and just set the draw debug type to none. That's it for this video. I hope you liked it. And if you have any other questions or requests or something that you didn't understand, please post a message in the comment or better yet, join the Discord server. In the next video, I think we're finally ready to be tackling more enemies. But as always, if there's uh, requests and feedback from the community that I handle a different part of Pixel 2D. I'm gonna try to do that. Until then, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.